Okay, so good evening, guys. Uh, thank you. Good evening, guys. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending uh, Fisher Asia the Representer's second week of online uh, lecture. So my name is Adrian, and together with my colleague Shannon, we'll be discussing today uh, what is ideal posture, what is it, and why it matters. So hopefully, after this session, you'll be able to understand more what what is the benefits of um, having an ideal uh, erect posture and how to apply it on your life. Okay, so first, we'll start with the development of posture. So a newborn baby has a C curve. Okay, so this C curve can be divided into two curves. Okay, so first, the thoracic curve or the curve on our upper back, and then the sacral curve or the curve on our pelvis. So once, once the baby starts to uh, lift his head off from the floor while lying on his stomach, they de we develop a second curve. Okay, this curve, this hollow curve, is called cervical curve. It is that curve on the small of our back, a hollow curve on the small of our back. Lastly, when the baby starts to stand and walk, another curve develops, which we call the lumbar or the low back curve. Okay, and these curves, these four curves, uh, uh, continue into the adulthood, and these are the natural curves that maintain our mobility and, and uh, spinal stability. This helps us to in doing our everyday life. Okay, so next slide. So what does posture mean? So basically, posture is how you hold your body. So it can, be, it can be divided into two, the static posture and the dynamic posture. Static posture is how you hold your body when you are not moving, like as when you are sitting, standing, or just lying down. On the other hand, dynamic posture is how you hold your body while moving, it's, uh, like as when you are jumping, walking, uh, lifting an object or picking an object from the floor. So next, next, uh, what is a good posture? Good posture basically is defined as, as the correct alignment of body parts maintained with minimum effort. Okay, meaning, whether you are moving or you're uh, stationary, if your body parts are properly aligned, you are able to, main, to maintain that posture with minimum effort, meaning it should not be fatiguing, it should not be should not expend a lot of energy. So that is basically a good posture. So maintaining a posture with minimum effort. For this discussion, we'll be focusing on what does a good standing posture looks like. Since we've discussed the sitting posture last week, this time we'll be focusing on a, stand, a good standing posture. Okay. Next. Okay, so good posture as viewed in the front view um, should, uh, should satisfy satisfy these uh, points. Okay, first, the ears are even. The ears should be even. If one ears are higher than the other, you, uh, you probably have a head tilt, okay? So the ears should be even. Next, the shoulders should be even. You can check your collar bones. If one collar bone is higher than the other, that's another side tilt, a side tilt towards the lower side. Next, we check if the hips are even. The hips, can, uh, the hips are checked by checking your abdominal fold and then checking the top of your pelvis. Okay, so if um, if the top of your pelvis are not aligned, one pelvis is higher than the other, it's not a good posture. So it should be even. Next, the thumbs should be facing forward. It should not face across the thigh or toward each other. Thumbs, when your thumbs are facing forward, this uh, signifies that your shoulder is in good posture or is, is in a neutral position. So that's it. Next, kneecaps should be level and facing forwards. Kneecaps should not touch each other or go outwards. So they should, be, they should face forward and they are level. One kneecap should not be higher more than the other. Lastly, the feet should be flat on the floor, facing forwards, and body weight is distributed with them evenly. You should not put more weight on, on, one, on one feet more than the other. Also, the weight should be focused on the ball of our feet, okay? So that is where we should bear our weight, not on the heels, but on the ball of our feet. So this is a good, this is a summary of what good standing posture looks like in a front view. Next, we'll check the other views. Okay, so what is a good standing posture? In so first, we'll uh, discuss the left picture, the left figure. So we uh, first, we draw an imaginary line connecting your ears, shoulders, hips, and ankles. They should all line up. 
Okay, this is the first um, um, good standing posture. The ear should line up with the center of your shoulder, should align with your hips, and the hip should align with your ankles. Okay, this is uh, one way to determine whether you have a good standing posture in the side view. Another is you check. But as discussed earlier, we have four spinal curves, the hollow curve on the back of the neck, a rounded curve on the upper back, another hollow curve on the small upper back, then another rounded curve on our pelvis. So this curve should be uh, neutral, should be in a normal degree. If, if It should not be excessively flat or excessively round. Next, we should, we should make sure that our chin is parallel on the floor. Okay. So the chin should be parallel, it should not be pointed upwards or downwards, it should be parallel on the floor, okay? Thumb should be facing forward, as discussed in the front view. Thumb should be facing forward because it signifies that your shoulders are in neutral position. Lastly, weight should be distributed evenly in both feet, okay? So this is, uh, this is the uh, points we should look for in a good standing posture inside you. Next. We're done with the good posture. Let's go with the poor posture. So basically, a poor posture is a position resulting from any deviation from an ideally aligned posture. So for example, in this picture, we discussed that the, that the uh, imaginary line should transect your ear, shoulders, hips, and ankles. In the second pic, we'll, we see that the hips are, are pushed too far backward. Okay, this is, uh, this is considered a poor posture because the The body parts are not aligned. Thing. So this is how we define poor posture. Have any deviation from the ideally aligned posture shown earlier. Okay, next, we'll be discussing the different types of poor posture. So first, we have here the side tilt or bend. Side tilt or bend uh, basically is an excessive leaning towards one side of the body, usually found with scoliosis. Okay, so first thing we check is whether the head is centered over the mid buttocks. Okay, so we put an imaginary line connecting a mid buttocks and your head. If your uh, if if this line does not, oops, then you probably have a side tilt or bend. So we can see here that the head is bent towards the right side. So there are more. There is an equal uh this equal an, an an equal distribution of the head. Okay, there's more uh that's bent towards the right side. Next, we check for the shoulder height. So they should be equal, but in this case, the uh, shoulder height are unequal. We can see that the left shoulder is higher more than the right. Next, we check for the, sh okay, the shoulder blades. Um, clearly, we can see that the left shoulder blade is higher than the right. Again, another positive for a side tilt or bend. Next, the distance between the body and the arms should be checked. Okay, If the distance are unequal, you are positive for a side tilt or bend. Here we can see that the right arm is closer to the body compared to the left arm. Okay. Lastly, we check for the hip height. We can check this uh, by using the abdominal fold, again comparing it to each another, or the topmost of their pelvis. So we compare whether one, one hip is higher more than the other. In this case, the right hip is higher more than the left. We seen for those with scoliosis. Also, if you are um, if you always use your form like this, okay, side tilt or side bend more uh, on a, on a, on one side, okay. The sway back, uh, the hyperlordotic posture. Okay, so the hyperlordotic posture basically is defined an excessive lumbar curve. So I will now spotlight Shannon's video because he's going to demonstrate what what hyperlordotic posture looks like in real life, okay? So hyperlordotic posture, usually this is seen for those um, military personnel who exaggerate their posture to puff their chest out. Also, this is usually seen for girls who like to stick their bottoms out to have that big bottom effect. Okay, now Shannon, we can see that Shannon is uh, demonstrating a good erect posture. Now he will uh, demonstrate a hyperlordotic posture, okay, by pushing him, here we can see that the hips are pushed backward excessively, causing an increased arch on his low back. 
Okay? So, with the, the increased arch of the low back will be to tightness of the muscles there. So, tightness of your lower back muscles will cause low back pain over time. Next, with a, a hyper arch low back, it stretches your abdomen. So, if your abdomen are stretched, the muscles there are, uh, are stretched also and can lead to weakness as, uh, over time. Okay, with the positioning of the pelvis, since the hips are pushed too much backward, excessively far backward, the gluteals or the muscles of our buttocks are also stretched, which can lead to weakness of the gluteal muscles. Next, lastly, with this kind of uh, hip positioning, the muscles in front of the thigh and back of the thigh develop tightness as they are shortened in this kind of posture. Okay, so the next posture we will discuss is the sway back posture. So sway back posture basically is defined as pelvis or hips that is excessively tipped forward. Okay, it's the complete opposite of the hyperlordotic posture. Okay, so now um, this is usually seen for pregnant women and those who are overweight. They usually manifest this kind of posture. Now that Shannon will demonstrate this posture. Okay, currently Shannon is standing erect and now he will push his pelvis forward. Okay, so push your pelvis forward. Okay, so this is what sway back posture looks like in real life. So what happens in this kind of posture? First, since the pelvis is pushed forward, the low back will compensate and the, the arch on our low back. Again, an increase in the low back arch will lead to tightness of the low back muscles and eventually lead to low back pain. Also, if you have an increased uh, arch in the low back, the abdominal weakens because they are stretched in this position. Next, we go up on the upper back. When, since the low back is arched, the upper back will try to compensate and it will increase its roundness. Okay, so we have an increased roundness on the upper back. So what happens in this, uh, in this, kind, of, in this kind of postural problem? So if, you're, uh, if your upper back is rounded too much, the mid-back muscles are stretched excessively. When these muscles are stretched excessively, it can lead to mid-back pain. Another thing is that a rounded back forces our shoulders to be pushed forwards. Okay, we call these a rounded shoulders. Rounded shoulders this will, uh, compresses the shoulder joint, the shoulder joint, which can lead to shoulder pain. Also, rounded shoulders uh, can lead to tightness of our chest muscles. Then we go back to the hip and pelvis. Again, in this kind of the hips, the gluteals or the muscles on our buttocks are stretched, which can lead to weakness. And lastly, in this, uh, in this position, muscles on the front and back of our thigh develop tightness over time. Okay, so this is uh, what sway back posture looks like. For the last posture, we will discuss the slouch posture, or basically we call this as relaxed standing. Usually, who works in front of a computer for long hours. Also, uh, it's also commonly seen among students who likes to read book without using a book stand. Okay. So, Shannon again will demonstrate this kind of uh, standing erect. Now, he will demonstrate a slouch posture by rounding his back. Okay. So, what happens in this kind of posture? Okay, first, we focus on the rounded back. Since it is the main cause, it's the main culprit of this posture. With a rounded back, again, you have, a, you have your mid-back muscles stretched excessively, which can lead to mid-back pain. Okay. Rounded, this rounded back also pushes your shoulders forward, you, uh, causing you to, to develop a rounded shoulders. A rounded shoulders compress your shoulder joint, again, which can lead to shoulder pain and tightness of your chest muscles. Now, this kind of uh, positioning of the upper back can, can cause your head and neck to be, positioning, to be positioned awkwardly. So we call this a forward head posture where your chin is poking outwards. Okay, so what happens in a forward head posture? First, uh, the, the, curve, the, curve on, the curve on the back of our neck, the, first the, the curve on the back of our neck is increased. So this increase in the curve on the back of our neck leads to tightness of the muscles on that part which eventually leads to neck pain. Also, if you have a tight muscles on the back of your neck, it can lead to development of tension headaches. Next, uh, lastly, uh, jaw muscles are tense in this position. In this uh, forward head posture, the jaw muscles are stretched and over time, they develop tension. They become tense. This can lead to jaw pain. Now, 
And this jaw pain can occur when you are talking, laughing, or eating. Lastly, we'll focus on the pelvis and hips. Okay. In this kind of position, the back is flat. Okay. If you have a rounded back, eventually it will lead to a flat back. Flat back means you have the arch in your low back is decreased or absent. If you have a flat back, your, ab your abdomen uh, develops tightness over time, tightness of abdominal muscles. Also, with the pelvis and hip positioning, um, this, this stretches your gluteal muscles, the muscles here on your buttocks, and the muscles in the front of your hip. When they are stretched, they develop thickness. Lastly, the muscles on the back of your thigh also develop tightness in this kind of posture. Uh, another thing to mention is that with the rounded shoulders, which compresses your shoulder joint, it can impinge your nerves. If your nerves are impinged, it can lead to tingling on hands. Okay, so these are the, um, basically, these are the common postures that we usually see in real life. So, next, thank you, Shannon, for the demonstration. Now we'll discuss what are the the advantages and disadvantages of posture and poor posture. Okay, so we'll differentiate the two. So first, uh, we'll talk about the muscles. Okay, muscles. The muscles, in an ideal posture, the muscles are unloaded and relaxed. So meaning, they're, they, they are um, using minimal effort to maintain that posture. They are unloaded and they are relaxed. Compared to the poor posture, where the muscles are overworking and they are easily strained. Okay, and then if you have muscle are strained, that it can lead to back pain, neck pain, or any shoulder pain, or any pain. Okay. Next is the circulation and respiration. In an ideal posture, these are, these are both increased. Well, in a poor posture, especially for those who exhibit a slouch posture, respiration is decreased. So why? If you have a slouch posture, your lungs can expand fully when you inhale. So if your lungs can expand fully, you receive lesser oxygen than normal. Again, it will lead to decreased circulation and respiration. Next is constipation. Constipation is uncommon for those who exhibit ideal posture, while it is more common for those who have poor posture. Again, in a slouch posture, the abdominal contents are compressed. So if your abdominal contents are compressed, they cannot function well. You have, the digestion is poor. So if you have a poor digestion, it can lead to constipation. Next, energy expenditure. So ideal posture, if you maintain an ideal posture, it, it, it consumes lesser energy, meaning you, are less, you have a lesser chance of fatigue, lesser fatigability. However, in the poor posture, you, it requires greater energy expenditure and again can lead to easy fatigability. Okay, next is the alertness and cognition. Alertness and cognition was found by researchers to be increased in someone who uh, exhibits an ideal erect posture while it is increased for those who have poor posture. Why is that? So we mentioned earlier that if you have a poor posture, the lungs can expand fully. If your lungs can expand fully, you have lesser oxygen. So if you have lesser oxygen, lesser nutrients are delivered in your brain. So if you have... Um, lesser blood supply nutrients to your, brain, to your brain, alertness and cognition are affected. They are decreased. So you have lose, uh, you easily lose your attention. You can focus. Okay, that's the uh, typical problems with poor posture. Next is the physical appearance. Those who, who those who have ideal posture were said to be more confident. They look more confident. They look more dominant. Well, those who have poor posture, they are, they are linked to having low self-esteem and depression. So, again, this is a basic summary of what ideal posture and post poor posture affects on our, um, in our muscles, respiration, on our energy, cognition, and appearance. So this is a, a basic summary of the benefits of an ideal posture. Next. Okay, now that we've, uh, we've discussed what is good standing posture, we've discussed the different postural problems. Now I will teach you how to assess your posture by yourself without anyone's help. Okay, so for the first test, I want you, okay, so Shannon, uh, Shannon will demonstrate the test. Okay, so I need you guys to get two pencils. So grab two pencils or sticks, one on each hand, okay? So do you have it? So if you can find any two pencils, containers, or sticks, grab them one on each hand. Then I want you to stand up straight, stand up straight comfortably. 
stand up, sit comfortably, make a fist, and drop your arms to your side. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, Shannon now completed the test. So we usually use this for testing if you have rounded shoulders. So what, what are the different scenarios in this test? So first, I want you to see where are the pencil tips pointing. I want you to focus where are the tips pointing as you do this kind of uh, posture. So there are three different scenarios that can occur when doing this test. So first, if the pencil tips point forward, okay, Shannon is demonstrating it. If the pencil tips or, or the sticks or containers are pointing forward, you are most likely negative for a rounded shoulders. So this is the normal or the neutral position. Okay, next. But if the pencil tips point across your thighs or rotated at an angle, you have mild rounded shoulders and will need some chest stretching and mid back strengthening. Okay, lastly, lastly, if, uh, if the pencil tips point toward each other, as demonstrated by Shannon, you have severe rounded shoulders and will need more aggressive chest stretching and mid back strengthening. Okay, so hopefully you were able to assess whether you have a you have no rounded shoulder or mild or severe rounded shoulders. Next, we'll proceed to that next test. So this test is called take the wall test. All you need, all you need is one thing. You have you need to go near a vacant or vacant wall. Okay, so here are the procedures. Okay, the wall test. The wall test for forward head. So first, I want you to stand against the wall with your heels, pelvis, and upper back all in contact with it. Okay, so, so second, maintain the contact points as comfortably as possible. Okay, good. Next, we'll see what are the different scenarios that may occur in this test. Okay, so first, first, if your head rests comfortably on the wall upon standing, you have no forward head posture. So, uh, Shannon's demonstrating what is a good test. Okay, if you exhibit this kind of posture, you are negative for a forward head. But if the back of your head does not touch the wall, you have a forward head posture. Okay, so basically, since you have uh, for, uh, very tight neck muscles on the back, you can uh, you can uh, make you can push it towards the wall without without having to. Uh, poke your chin upwards. Okay, so for the next test, we'll do uh, take the wall test again, same position, but this time for the low back. So we'll assess the curve on our low back. So for same, stand against the wall with your heels, pelvis, upper back, and head in contact with it. I want you to put one hand on the small of your back. Put one hand on the small. So there are three different scenarios here. First, if your hand easily fills in the gap, between your low back and the wall, this is the normal. So if it if your hand fills in completely the gap, so there's no there's no space left. This is the normal, meaning you have a neutral low back. Okay, but if but if your hand can't fit on the gap, meaning you can put you can put you can put it inside, it's you are positive for a flat back posture. So if you can put your hand uh, on the gap, you are positive for a flat back posture. Lastly, if you if you if if you are if you easily put your hand on the gap and still there's much space left, you are positive for a hyperlordotic posture or you have an excessive uh, arching of your low back. Okay, so now that we've done with the self-assessment of the posture, we will now teach you the corrective exercises you can do in case you exhibit these postures. Okay. Okay, so first corrective exercise for those who has forward head. So we call this chin tax. So uh, I want you to I want you to sit uh, against the wall, okay, with your upper back, hips, and pelvis in contact with it. Then put your fist on front of your neck with your palms facing your neck. Okay, good. All right, that's what. And next, I want you to gently press or gently nod on your fist. Okay, gent gently fit. Nod or pressing. Okay, that's good. So that's good. That's uh, that's a chin tuck. So basically, chin tuck is a very gentle exercise. It aims to strengthen your weak neck muscles on the front. At the same time, it stretches the 
uh, tight muscles on the back of your neck. Okay, good. You can do this. Uh, you can hold this position for five seconds. You can do this for 10 times for two sets and then do it twice daily. Next corrective exercise is for rounded shoulders or rounded back. We call this the wall angels. Okay. So same position, sit against the wall. Sit with your mid back. Make sure that your upper back, your head, pelvis and hips are in contact with the wall. Then raise your shoulders and elbows up to 90 degrees. Okay. So I want you to raise your arms overhead while maintaining those contact points. Okay, go. Raise your arms overhead while maintaining contact with the wall. Okay, good. So what do what this uh, exercise aims to is to uh, it aims to stretch your chest muscle at the same time strengthen your mid back muscles. Okay, so you can do this ten times for two sets at least twice daily. Okay, it's a good exercise for strengthening your mid back and stretching your chest muscles. Okay, good. Next corrective exercise is for those with low with high um uh, for those with uh, sorry, not low back, but a, a high back arch or hyperlordotic posture. So we call this exercise as the posterior pelvic tilt. Okay, same position, sit against the wall. Then I want you to, uh, I want you to roll your hips backward. Roll your hips backward in an effort to flatten the curve on your low back. Okay, Shannon will demonstrate it. Go, roll your hips backward and flatten your low back. Okay, good. Okay. These, uh, these exercises strengthens your abdominal muscles as well as your luteal muscles. You can hold this position for 5 seconds, do it for 10 repetitions for 2 sets, and do it twice daily. It's good for those with a hyperlordotic or excessively increased low back arch. Next corrective exercise is seated parching. Okay, Same position, seated. So... I want you to uh, stand against the wall with your back relaxed. Okay. okay. Knees should, uh, your feet should be shoulder width apart. They should not be close together or too far from each other, from one another too much. Okay. So seated, march seated marching is for those people who have a flat back posture. So basically, uh, Shannon, I'd like to raise one leg off the floor, one at a time. Okay, so right, then slightly lower it. Then raise your left leg as high as possible. Then okay, slowly lower it. Make sure that when you're doing this uh, exercise, you are not uh, pointing your knees outside or inwards. So there's no rotation of the hips. So it should your knees should straight uh, should stay straight forward while you are doing this. This strengthens your uh, muscles on the front of your hip in order to counteract that flat back posture. You can do this 10 times each leg, raise 10 times each leg for two sets and do it twice daily. Last corrective exercise that we can do at home for those with rounded back or shoulders. Okay, we call this uh, a hover overhead. And then I will write, uh, I'd like, yes, yeah, so raise your shoulders up to 90 degrees and put it on the wall, uh, put it against the wall. Okay. So I want you to use your hip as a hinge and push your hips backward as you lower your body down. So push your hips backward as you lower your body. Okay, good. This should stretch your mid-back, low-back, and upper back. Okay? You can maintain this position for 15 seconds and do it three times, at least twice daily. This is a good stretching for those who have a rounded shoulders, a flat back, because it gently stretches your whole spine. Okay, for those with a tight hamstring muscles or muscles on the back of your thigh, you can also feel some stretch there if you have a tightness on that area. Okay, good. Three times. Okay, so thank you, Shannon, for the corrective exercises for the demo. Last, uh, last uh, topic for today is the home ergonomics. Okay. Okay, so last week we uh, Shannon discussed what is an ideal sitting workstation. This time we'll uh, help you set up uh, how to set up your own standing workstation with an ideal workstation, ideal posture. Okay, so our 
um, main focus for today is to convert your sitting workstation into standing workstation. So, Shannon, uh, I would now I will now spotlight Shannon's video again for the demonstration. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So uh, right now we can see Shannon sitting. So we want him to set up his own standing workstation. So Shannon, I want you to stand up. Okay, I want you to stand up. So in the, unfortunately, the, the laptop is too low, the desk is too low. So it causes his neck to point downwards, okay? Which is not good, which is not ideal. So in order to, um, to lift his desk, uh, you can use a box, a plastic container, or anything, or books, to, so that you can lift the height of your laptop. Okay, so Shannon will use a box to lift his laptop. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, now, now, uh, okay, now we've raised his laptop. But still, still too low. We can still see that his neck is pointing downwards just to see the, the monitor screen. So you can use books, put more books underneath the laptop to again adjust the height of the monitor. Okay, Shannon will use books to add for additional height. Okay, good. Okay, now the height's good, but we uh we should now check for the tilt of the lap monitor. So. As you can see, the laptop is in 90 degrees. This isn't good because Shannon will not be able to see clearly what's on the monitor. So I want you, Shannon, to tilt your laptop backwards slightly. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. At least 10 to 15 degrees of backward tilt is enough. Okay. Now we have set up as a ideal workstation. So the monitor is below the eye level. The monitor is one arm's length from Shannon. Okay, next, next with uh, now that the workstation is uh, correct, we will now correct his standing posture. We start with the feet. Okay, as you can see, Shannon is uh, place his left leg backwards. Backward. This is not good because this causes an uneven distribution of body weight. So he focuses his weight on the left leg only. This, this is not ideal because it can lead to neck to the knee pain or hip pain on the left side. So I want you, Shannon. I want you, Shannon, to to place your feet together, shoulder width apart. Okay, good. Shoulder width apart, and I want you to evenly distribute your weight on both feet, focusing them on the balls, uh, on the balls of your feet. Okay, now the feet is good. We'll go with the hips. So we we want the hips to be aligned with the ankles. We don't want it to be excessively tipped forward or excessively tilt backward. Okay, so I want your hips to align with your ankles. Okay, now Shannon was able to align his hips with his ankles. We'll now uh, go to the shoulders. Okay, as you can see, Shannon exhibits a rounded shoulders, a rounded back. So Shannon, to, in order to correct this, Shannon, I'd like to ask you to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Gently, okay, gently squeeze. Okay, now, now after gently squeezing his shoulder blades, we can now see that the shoulders are now aligned with his hips. Okay, that's good. Okay, now the shoulders are good. The upper back slide is much better. Than, it's now good. Now we'll focus on the head and neck. So you can see he exhibits a forward head posture. The chin is um, the chin is tucked downwards. So I want you to uh, chin tuck, to so perform chin tuck by placing your fist against your neck. Okay. Place your fist against your neck and gently nod and press on your fist. Okay, in this way, we can position his neck in a neutral. At the same time, we can align your ears to your shoulders, which is the correct alignment. Now, we have a good um, alignment of the um, trunk, head, and limb, lower limb. So, ears are, are aligned with the shoulders, shoulders are aligned with the hips, and the hips are aligned with the ankles. Now, we can finally position his elbows, wrist, and forearm. The elbows should at least be at 90 to 120 degrees. Okay, the, okay, now that's good. It should also be clo placed close to the body, not away from it. Should be close should be close towards the body. Next, the forearm and wrist should be straight. It should be parallel to the floor. It should not be bent upward or backwards excessively. 
Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, Shannon's elbow are, are at 90 degrees, placed close to the body. The wrist and forearm are in straight position, uh, parallel with the floor. Now, this is an ideal standing workstation. Now, we have now completed the perfect setup for um, Shannon on his standing workstation. So, why do we need to, um, to stand while working? So, um, even though you, have, you exhibit an ideal seating posture, if you if you maintain that posture, for example, like five hours, it can still lead you to it can still cause back pain, neck pain, or any pain. So what what's the key here for uh, for this ideal posture is to move between this ideal posture. So if you are sitting for let's say for thirty minutes, you can shift to standing workstation for another thirty minutes. In that way. Um, you went, you ha you don't have to maintain one static posture for one static posture for prolonged hours, because it, however correct or however ideal your posture is, it, your posture is if you maintain it in a prolonged hours, it can still lead to development of different body aches and pains. Okay, so that's the last uh, topic of our discussion. So thank, uh, okay. so thank you for joining us. So if you want to view our additional contents, uh, the topics we discussed last week you can su subscribe to our youtube channel for more content our youtube channel name youtube channel's name is Asia asia therapy center you can also scan this QR code, qr code to get to our youtube channel lastly please help us by doing a 30 second survey go to www.menti.com and use the code 702729 or uh, basically scan the qr code below so it will help us to um, develop our next sessions better. Okay, so uh, for those who are, um, for those who wanted to attend more sessions this week, we have a stretching session on Wednesday and a strengthening session on Friday, same time, 6.30 p.m. So if you are available, so make sure that you register on our um, seminars. So thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something new today, which you can apply in your real life. So we want we don't want those body aches and pains to um, develop while working. So thank you. Hope you learned something new today.